Good morning and welcome to Sim World today. One more narrow version of me on the road doing some more Sim World you scouting trips. I'm Marsh joined this Wednesday by B. Ron Stadamus. Good morning, B. Ron. How are you? Very good, Marsh. On a day where uh, we had some great Sim World U action, of course, the Yankees decided to show up last night and fought the Dodgers in game for the World Series. So that is potentially going to be a thing we talk about more in the future. But hey, for now. Good day in sports. So give me, let's give me your. It. Let's lead with that right here. Give me your yeah. takeaway from yesterday. Are the Yankees alive? What's the what's the thoughts here? So, look, they really haven't uh, had a. They haven't done a good job all series. Really, uh, with Judge struggling as well, that doesn't help things. But I, there's. A, I'm gonna give them a chance to still win it because I, I kind of wanted to see it go the distance. Now, and they've won this game. They can use that momentum to go forward. I want to see it go to Game Seven. It's a World, it's a World Series, Marsh. I want to see it go Game Seven. Uh, will will they get there? I don't think so, but I would like to see it go Game Seven and the Dodgers to win. Still feels like the Dodger bats are are hotter, and I think that's what matters in October. Plus, there's a reason no team has ever come back except for the Red Sox down from three zero. There is you can win a game. <laughs> It's not easy. It's not easy it's to not. keep that thing rolling. So uh, no. I would still be taking the Dodgers. I think the Dodgers will close out on five, mostly just because I think the desperation of game four, uh, you don't want to get swept at home. And I still yep. think the, the Dodger bats are deeper. The the arms is, are better for L.A. than what the Yankees got out there. Uh, so I, I would still take I would still take Dodgers. Yeah. Let them finish it in five. I'd be I'd be impressed if this thing goes back to six, uh, to, be, to be honest with you. All right. Let's jump into SimWorld U. Uh, where game of the week last night did not disappoint. An 84-82 win, big second half comeback from Miami uh, after trailing by nine early on. Not a huge Mississippi State Terrell Pearson night, but a huge depth night for uh, the running Rebels. Actually, I don't think they're running. But anyway, for Mississippi State, uh, it's Maverick Strong and Mike Dowell lead the way with 13. A little bit different than what we've seen from this squad be run uh, early on. Yeah, it was different from what we've seen from them early on for the season. And for the game of the week as well, I feel like. Some of these have been disappointing uh, in some respects, but this one, definitely not so much. It started off that way for sure. But... Miami was able to fight back and make it a close game and have it come down to the very final possession of that game, uh, which I'm really curious to get your thoughts on uh, that final possession, Marsh. Look, it's it was entertaining to say the least, B-Ron. Um, you know, I think that my takeaway from this game wasn't really so much the final possession, but I think that what we saw in a miss, or excuse me, Miami in the second half as a whole. Um, this is a team that has been doubted for much of the season. Uh, they start out number one, they have some early season struggles, and we start to talk about this team as you know, are they actually not number one team? All these things, you know, Edgar Fernandez gets benched. And in the first half of this game, they got outclassed by Mississippi State. So the fact that the Hurricanes were able to rally back to make this a final possession moment, I think, speaks volumes to what the depth of this team has. Because right now, they are a team that I think still has the capability to be the number one team in the ACC. It's going to be tough to do with Duke. I don't think they're currently the number one team in the ACC. But this is a much different team than what we saw uh, in their first, what, four games. Uh, they lost, but this is probably their best effort. Um, and I think that's a trend in the right direction. On the other side, I think Mississippi State proved why they are maybe one of the, if not the biggest surprise of the season for so many people. Because they have been deep, but they have typically been relying on Terrell Pearson. They didn't get that yesterday, and that's not because Terrell Pearson didn't play well. It's just that the shots were falling elsewhere, and that's a depth thing that we have not seen from Mississippi State. So, to me, yeah, you can you can boil it down to one position. I've always been a, a, a bit of an advocate against letting the final possession prove anything for you, because what does one possession really mean? It means that if it goes right for one team, suddenly they're they're infinitely better than the other team. I don't I don't subscribe to that theory. I think that it tells us more uh, from a from a full game perspective. No, I and and, and I, I agree with you there. I, I think that you have to look at the whole of the game versus that one possession. But uh, but I do think that one possession uh, was obviously important for the what potentially could have been the rest of that game. 
But you have, like you said, you have to give credit where it's due to Miami because, like you said, they came out the gate. We all saw it. Came out the gate struggling, really. It hadn't looked confident. Um, you know, all, 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 all the other things you, you could say about this team that, for all intents and purposes, has a huge target on their back. And this game kind of showed that they are still very dangerous uh, when, they're, when, when, when they're clicking. Uh, you got Bianco who, uh, you know, 20, was it 25 points, 26 points, mm -hmm. uh, Hennessy double, double, uh, Macklemore 12, uh, 13, 13 points. The, the, this team is deadly Marsh still. And I don't think you can overlook them, continue to overlook them because at some point I think they're going to figure it out. And I do think they're going to be that, going to be that number, maybe number two team in the ACC this season. With Duke being the number mm -hmm. one, and maybe even Georgia Tech being number three, with the way they're with the way they're starting now, maybe forgot about forgot about Georgia Tech in the ACC. Uh, let's shift over to Butler and Tennessee, where this was a big prove it game on both sides, and the proof that came out of it was that Butler is legitimate. An eighty nine seventy one win. Their defense was suffocating Henrik Vekicel to just eleven points, despite a big Trey Turner night. But the Butler Bulldogs moved to four and one on the season. They have five guys that end up in double figures, and they win this game the way they've been winning games all season long on the back of their defense and timely shooting. Uh, they ain't shoot well from deep, but they hit the shots when they needed to. Uh, your takeaway here, B. Ron, between Butler, who certainly looks like a better ranked team than number 20, and Tennessee, who clearly is not the number five team in the nation. Man, I, I'm still amazed at how unsafe <laughs> these numbers, you know, one through five, one through six uh, spots are in the, in, in the top 25. Those mm -hmm. teams just can't catch a break unless you're Kentucky or Gonzaga. Uh, it can't catch a break. Uh, but look, I, I, Butler is is legit, Marsh. Like you said, they they really really are. And I think that on the other side of it for Kentucky or Tennessee, rather, sorry, they have uh, question marks around. Henrik Beckett, I feel like that still kind of yeah. continued to loom large here. You know, uh, Rick Barnes set him for the final five minutes of that game yesterday, uh, which, you know, is concerning, considering he's supposed to be your number two behind Trey Turner. And he hasn't, he hasn't started out that way, really. Yeah, this was what we thought from Tennessee. Well, I guess we can start with the bad for my, my point here. Um, this is a really good offense when Trey Turner and Henrik Vekic are rolling. It's why people felt so highly about Vekic as maybe slipping into the lottery because of his ability to do a lot of things with the basketball. He's still been a really great playmaker for him. Three assists against um, against Butler. But the problem has been that he just has not lived up to the same type of 30-point, 20-point nights that he did a season ago when the Volunteers made, made their deep run um, through, at the time, basketball bedlam, what would, you know, moving on to Hoopsteria. That that, to me, is a huge problem for Tennessee because it, as good as Trey Turner is, if Henrik Vekic is not more than just 11 points, then this team is no better than a number, I don't think they're ranked anymore, but the Missouri Tigers, who are solely reliant on Jafet Towns to get their offense going, and they don't have anything else because that's kind of the way it's not that they don't have anything else, but they don't have consistently in number two. That's what Tennessee is quickly trending towards. If that pitch is not going to be more and the fact that he got benched last night, benchings matter. Uh, it can be short term, but these stretches where a coach tells you exactly how they feel. I don't really care what they say in a press conference. I don't really care what they say in terms of, well, he got this many minutes. Their actions on the floor tell you everything that you need to know. And in this case, it's that they don't trust Henrik Beckage down the stretch. On the opposite side, Butler. This was a massive game, and this was a game that's very similar to what Mississippi State gave us, and I think the rosters that are pretty similar. Butler is not a team that's reliant on, even to the extent that, that Butler or that um, Mississippi State is, they are don't have a superstar. They don't have a guy that's probably going to end up being a, a top 25 pick, but what they do have is defense. They get rebounds. They attack the glass. They actually got out-rebounded in this one by Tennessee. This was a little bit more up-tempo than we typically see uh, from, from Butler, but they did what they do. They 
took over on the offensive glass. They had nine offensive rebounds, and they play lights out defense on the guys that they need to go off of, right? And Butler, I think, has shown us we're going to let a star do well against us, but we're not going to let anybody else do well. And that's exactly what happened last night. Again, big night from Trey Turner with 22, but the rest of this roster, you're looking at TJ Rockwell with 14 points. It's not a bad number two point output, but it's not enough. And then on top of that, they, again, shot great from the floor. They got to the free throw line. They end up winning this one, running away with a 50-point second half. All right, let's head to our last segment, which was also a runaway game. This was Duke at Memphis. Number three, Duke gets an 88-61 win. Huge night from Cooper Flag, 25-11-4. And this kind of just proves what we were talking about in terms of the ACC. It is Duke's to lose, and they looked dominant. Yeah, and, you know, Mars, coming into the season, there's a lot of talk about Duke. And, yes, they have Cooper Flag. Yes, they have all these good things going for them. But they didn't perform well last season in the ACC. So, you know, how was that uh, going to carry over into this season? It really has it, honestly. <laughs> it's yeah. ever, since, ever since Cooper Flag and Ogoskis got there, Duke looks like a completely different team. They've turned around and they have worked their way into that top spot in the ACC and in that conversation of being one of the top teams in the nation overall as a result. And they got it done last night because of the defense of Roderick Little on Leif Darius Outlaw. Leif Darius Outlaw is a guy who can get buckets. We've seen it throughout his time, both in Simbo Prep and his end of Simbo U. Uh, so he's not an easy guy to stop. Held him. This man played four. He played the whole game, Marsh, and we scored mm-hmm. twelve points, and yeah. and shot what forty two percent. We have six of fourteen. Yeah, that's Roderick Little. His defense, man, really great yeah, work this- last night on the Series Outlaw. Yeah, a couple, couple quick takeaways. This is yeah. the same Lasterius outlaw situation that we've always seen, is that he, he, he is allergic to playing with other good players, apparently, or at least <laughs> other guys that can take the offensive load. Because, I mean, to your point, 40 minutes and he ended up with 12 points. Uh, that's not because he, you know, truthfully, I looked at 12 points, um, and I'm thinking, okay, maybe he didn't shoot well. He didn't shoot bad. He just didn't shoot it enough. And I think that's honestly probably a good thing for Lace Darius Outlaw because in the past, it's just been force it, force it, force it. Trying to get others going. This game also just was a wrap. I'm shocked that they left him in for a game that you're losing by 20 plus points uh, for 40 minutes. On the other side, this is what Duke looks like when Jeremiah Minor is on. And it has always been my concern with Jeremiah Minor is that his irrational confidence is going to carry games, but it's also going to cost you games. And in this one, he had 15 points in 27 minutes, got 11 times, second most shots on the of, of anyone on the team, and he went three or six from deep. This was a good floating Lasterius Hell, or excuse me, um, uh, Jeremiah Minor night. There are going to be sinking Jeremiah Minor nights. And in this one, they didn't need him to do much more. But that is always going to be the barometer of how good Duke can be. They are always going to be competitive in games so long as Cooper Flag is there and Roderick Little is playing stout defense. But the question mark is going to be, is Jeremiah Minor on or is he off? Because he is a high-volume shooter no matter who is on the floor. And it, it doesn't matter if it's the presumptive number one overall pick next to him. Jeremiah Minor's confidence is that he's still the scoring guy. If he's doing what he did last night, Duke's, Duke's very good. If he's not doing what he did last night, Cooper Fly is going to need a heck of a lot more than 25. Or these games aren't going to be blowouts, which is typically the more likely cause. If he's rolling, they're going to be blowing teams out. If he's not, it's going to be a competitive battle and out game. Uh, any last thoughts, b Ron, before I take my hit of oxygen and we race through what was a huge SimWorld U night for SimWorld U wrap-up? Uh, no, man. Go, go for it. All right, thought you were going to give me a little bit more time to breathe, but here we go. We are diving in <laughs> to our first game, which was broadcasted, of course, on uh, CBS South Carolina uh, beats University yeah, of Virginia, eighty-three to seventy-one. Camry Aldridge carrying the way, uh, twenty-six points, oh, and in the first game post Tony Bennett's retirement, uh, the Virginia Cavaliers fall. Let's head to Florida State, where the Richmond Spiders take down the 
Florida State Seminoles, 61-56. Braylon Lash carrying the way for Richmond with 12. Uh, Arkansas blows out Temple. We thought to our Temple might be a sleepy team. Not so much. 18 points from DJ Wagner. Nick Bowie with 15. And the Razorbacks move to 5-3. and three. Auburn playing host to St. Mary's. And the Gales go on the road to pick up their third win of the season. Kai Newby, 19. Dime Hardaway, 11. Wichita State hosting the number one team in the nation did not matter. Immune to the road losses as Mudo and Glory Tate lead the way for 22 apiece for the unbeaten Wildcats. Stay in the SEC where Michigan State traveled to LSU. Big night for Malcolm Chamberlain, 16-12 and 12, and a 20-point win for Michigan State, 69-49. LSU 1-6 now on the season. Jackson State heads to Texas A&M, number 24 ranked. Uh, not likely to be anymore. 22 points from Roy Mason, 20 from D. Woodley, and Jackson State gets a 70-60 to 60 win over the Aggies. Arizona blasting VCU at home, 74-46. Huge night from Juan Valentine, 19 points. Theophilus Hilton with 14. I don't think it's... Oh, I know. I, I had an extra tab open. But that is our Simrel new wrap-up. Uh, a huge night across the board. Um, we got a heck of a lot of entertainment in all of that, B-Ron. And all that entertainment continues here tonight on Wednesday night. Baylor and Georgia uh, on ESPN at 8. And then head over to Simrel TV where the number two team in the nation, Gonzaga Zags, head to Oklahoma at 8.30. Plenty of other ranked matchups. Texas and Houston, a little in-state matchup. Ohio State and Utah going to it. We're going to see what the follow-up act is here for number 11 Georgia Tech going to Washington. State, who was ranked last uh, last week, they fell out of the top 25 with a loss, uh, their first of the season. So, like a lot more to come. Uh, we'll recap all of that tomorrow. B. Ron, are you back on here tomorrow morning, or are you getting the night off, or the morning off? Uh, I think I have the morning off. I think I will. Morning. I think it'll be JR. All right. Well. JR returns to the show tomorrow morning. We will talk that. Uh, full slate of SimWorld U action uh, and hey, some SWBA talk probably as well. All right, thanks for joining us here on SimWorld TV. Only place you can see the game, be the game.